2021 was a year that will live in infamy. We're not here to talk about anything deep, inspiring, or depressing. We're here to talk about video games. And in this video specifically about Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen, and the year that they had, I'm going to break down some of the highlights of Pantheon through each quarter of the year and we'll end briefly with why I'm excited about the progress that we saw and why I'm looking forward to 2022. There will be news I omitted out of necessity because I don't want this video to become a hour long documentary that you'll all be asleep through. So if you're interested in some of that information that may have been omitted, I will have lots of links in the description below to content creators that covered things more in depth throughout the year, and of course, official sources from Pantheon themselves. Now even with those omissions, it was necessary to split this video into two parts. This video will cover quarter one and quarter two. Next week, we'll cover quarters three and four. So January, quarter one. January started off with a bang. The announcement that they had received additional funding from a private source. Visionary Realms was clear that this was not full funding, but that it was not an insignificant amount either. They doubled down on the big news by going to one of the largest sources of eyeballs for Pantheon, Co-Carnage. This was the unveiling of the evaluation build, and we got to see Co, along with his legion of viewers, Experience it with the childlike joy that he channels. A childlike joy we can all envy. But Ko wasn't the only one to experience this build. Shortly after the stream, we had perhaps one of the coolest things of the year in March. Community streamers running amok in Pantheon. Bazgrim, Minus, Nathan Napalm, and Theric had the opportunity to hop in game for a broadcasted romp to Fortress Devayer. They each went through a solo experience before moving on to group content. Minus surprised everyone by playing a rogue. And we now have documented evidence of Nathan Napalm playing a Dire Lord. What made this so cool was honestly the lack of dev intervention. Yes, Ronick was part of their group, but it was clear from the onset that Minus was leading the group through with little foreknowledge of what was to come with a lot of organic exploration and death lots of death well the streams with notable people like the excellent streamer co carnage the wonderful artist jim lee are fantastic they always felt more like scripted events this felt like a group of friends hanging out the way we all want to one of my favorite quotes from the stream came from joppa you guys need to get in the mindset this is going to be difficult so take your time and be aware of the res debuff. This happened re right, right after a wipe in, in the stream. And it was it's one of those moments where it's like, oh, so there's going to be some difficulty in Pantheon. Now, March also saw the beginning of what would be an ongoing update through the latter part of the year, the road to Alpha. In the March developer letter, we got a 20 point list of essentials to prepare for Alpha 1. This covered everything from classes to audio. This road to Alpha was exciting, but it's a whisper of what was to come later in the year. It read more like a grocery list, with one exception, the URP. The newsletter went on to further explain just what these important letters meant. Here it is in their own words. Now, let's get back to that big asterisk of the URP and networking. Converting the entire project to a universal render pipeline allows for better performance, more advanced shaders, and simplicity in creating shaders. The networking component is in preparation to support for the thousands of players we have coming in. The engine is complete and smashingly performant, but it will still need to be integrated. These are big tasks. They are going to take our lead programmer's attention for several months. So right now, Kyle and Rob are getting some tooling in place so that the rest of the team can keep working when he goes heads down into the universal render pipeline and networking stuff. That wrapped up a pretty interesting and exciting first quarter. Things accelerated a little bit more in quarter two. April, or rather May for most of us, 
began with a state of the game dev roundtable with none other than Chris Joppa Perkins. This two hour video is well worth the watch or listen because it lays out so much of the vision for the game from the creative director himself. I'll never tire of hearing Joppa speak about the game. You can hear how careful he's trying to be, but his passion for the game shines through. There's a lot to pull from this single interview, and it's perhaps the most important update from quarter two, because it's just so thorough on the vision of the game and the current state. The interview is a video of its own, and several creators have already covered it, including Pantheon Plus, Bazgrim TV, and Nathan Napalm. I've linked those below in case you want to take a look and a listen at what they had to say. Nathan had a good take on what Pantheon is aiming for with Alpha. Let's take a listen. But you've got to respect the way that they are approaching Alpha as being in a better state than most games launch at, to be honest, okay? You got to respect that because they don't want this to be a throwaway game that launches roughly and poorly and bad reception because that's happened way too many times before with really great MMOs and completely decimated and ruined them. So let's get it right this time. So it was the final vision of Brad McQuaid and it's worth that extra bit of attention and detail to make sure that it's done correctly. Not to mention that sometimes, not saying that VR has admitted they're going to do it or anything like that, but a lot of the times some of the NDA is kind of lifted during Alpha and that makes it even more critical. So you got to understand all that, but let's move on. I think this is critical and I think it shows that Visionary Realms is thinking long term. Hype cycles can be deadly to games, especially MMOs. We've seen that recently with New World, and to a lesser extent, Bless Unleashed and Elyon. I think we're in a new era for MMOs where the crowd is so hungry for something to fit that hole they have in their gaming library, they will attach a decade of hopes and dreams onto any game that shows any promise. Those expectations are bound to be missed, so I think Pantheon here is working to both meet as many expectations of its fan base as they can, while also tempering some of those expectations. Through June, we continue to receive updates on the move toward HDPR conversion, highlighting just how large a task that was and stressing that once completed, it would ease work going forward. I don't think many of us were prepared for what was to come though. I certainly wasn't. Now this roughly marks the point where we saw an increase in the cadence and communication from Pantheon. The first half of the year was exciting, but it holds nothing on the reveals, the information, and the increased transparency we saw in the second half of 2021. That really has me so excited for 2022. The second half of the year alone deserves its own video, so we'll pause here, catch our breath, and catch up on the recap next week as we cover quarter three and quarter four. My name is Redbeard Flynn, and I look forward to seeing you soon, perhaps in the world of Terminus. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. See you next week.